I think I see it. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that little preview of what we're going to be making today. Uh, we're going to be making that boss fight as a full command block tutorial for you guys to add to your very own worlds. And if you guys want, there will be a full fight scene of me versus the Enderman boss at the end of the video. Anyways, let's get into the commands. For all these commands, we have a lot of different things going on. Each stack is going to kind of represent something different. So this big area right here up first, this is going to be representing the commands for the spawning in. As you guys saw in the preview, there's almost a little cutscene of the Enderman screaming right in your face and spawning in. That's what this set of commands right here does. This set of commands here, if you guys saw during the fight, there was a bunch of Endermites that would kind of spin in the air towards me. That's what this stack of commands right here is. And then this stack right here, if you guys saw during the fight, there was this purple thing that would occasionally follow me around. That's this attack that's right here. And then finally, we have the second phase right here. So we have some special sound effects that when we get the boss low enough, he unlocks a new attack, which is where he can give us blindness or darkness effect, as well as he gets a bunch of speed and strength and becomes just a really massive threat for a short period of time. So like I said, it's gonna, it, it is quite a lot of commands. And it's gonna be quite complicated. So I'm gonna try and go slow, but make sure you guys are following closely. These commands that we have here are only for demonstrating and testing purposes. So they just help me switch my game mode back and kill the boss. Just in case you guys are curious, they're not important for you guys. Uh, this is just for me and for demonstrating. So let's do a quick demonstration of what all is actually going on here. So similar to my skeleton boss video, we're using this purple pearlescent frog light and throwing an eye of ender on top of this pearlescent frog light. What's going to happen, and I'll show you guys the scoreboard. You guys look on the side of the screen, you guys can of course see my scoreboard. What's going to happen is that as soon as we throw the Eye of Ender on top of here, it's going to start adding up. You to pick it up before it starts, but once it starts, it's going to make the Enderman spawn in. We're going to do some stuff with the camera command. It's going to make this little cutscene happen. Uh, I do have to be in adventure mode or survival mode, so that means the Enderman can get angry at me for the cutscene to work all the way. But he basically summons in and gets some special attacks. So I'll do a quick little demonstration of what that looks like. I'm... So if I go ahead and summon this guy in, back away, you can see it's tallying up on the side. Enderman does this little scream, we get a camera shake, and then the actual fight begins. Uh, I'm just going to kind of hop around, try and survive while he does some of his other attacks. So there, right there, you see his little Endermite attacks. Basically, summon some Endermites that kind of spin around towards the player, and they will explode if they get near the player. Get away. Gonna wait for him to do his other attack, just so you guys can see what it looks like. If I live long enough, that is. There it is. So you see this little particle thing? It's gonna be constantly- oh, you did the Endermite at the same time. It's gonna be constantly following me for a long time, and if I get too near, it does a lot of damage. I'm gonna, gonna try and live. Alright. So those are the two attacks, and then once we get him down low enough, he's going to enter the second phase, which is where he can give us blindness, as well as giving him himself speed and strength that just turns him into a really dangerous adversary. As you can see, these guys kind of just spiral around out of control. It's really fun. Alright, let's get into the actual commands here, guys. I said this first segment here, it's all about spawning him in, as well as the little cutscene that happens. In fact, we have a lot of different camera commands, so if you guys have never used camera commands, you'll get a little bit of an intro. First thing we're doing is we're simply going to be doing this particle. Uh, you can see it's on a zero tick delay. We're doing this particle on any eye of Ender that has this score. That just means that the Ender eye is on top of a pearlescent thing. So there's two particles that's happening. One's the roar, but there's also see these little purple particles. That's what this command is right here. It just gives a little bit more of an Enderman vibe to it. Next up, we're getting into the real commands. So this command is on a five tick delay. What we're saying is, hey, for anything named Eye of Ender, if there's a pearlescent frog light beneath it, go ahead and start adding the score of Ender to the eye. Remember, that's what we're seeing on the side of the screen that's adding up. Next up, we are executing. This is a very similar thing, except we're going to be doing a different particle. And since this is a chain off the five tick delay, it's not going to be happening nearly as much as the purple particle right here. 
Next up, we're going to be playing this random fizz sound just to give a little bit of a sound effect that you guys heard. Then we're going to be actually summoning in the Enderman. So basically, once the Eye of Ender hits the score of 11, we're going to summon an Enderman and we're going to name him Dragon's Hand. Now, if you guys want to name him something different, uh, absolutely feel free to. Just make sure you name him the same thing throughout all the different commands that have his name in it. Next up, we're going to be giving the Dragon's Hand resistance. And also, if you guys want to make it uh, take longer to kill, you can give it more resistance. If you want to make it have less time to kill, give it less resistance. That's up to you guys. Then we are going to basically, if the Dragon's Hand does not have the tag damaged, we're going to make the player do damage to it. So this command basically makes it so as if the player attacked the Enderman. This is to get the Enderman instantly aggressive, so he's going to start screaming as soon as we do this little cutscene here. The tag damaged is something we give it after the cutscene is over, and that kind of basically says, hey, you don't need to run the cutscene commands anymore. You guys will see this tag in a second. Just know that this is what's making the Enderman aggressive at the nearest player. And then we just add the tag damaged. Yeah, pretty, pretty simple. Then we're going to kill the Eye of Ender. So that's the first little chain command. Next up, we're just going to be doing some simple things. This is just going to be prepping the boss fight. So what we're going to be doing is for the Dragon's Hand, if it does not have the tag spawn, so basically once it has the tag spawn, then it no longer gives it the health boost. This is just a one-time health boost. So we're giving it for a very long duration, uh, four, once again, if you want to give it more health, go ahead and make this number higher. If you want to give it less health, make this number lower. That's going to give it extra health. The next command is going to heal it. This is going to give it the actual health boost. Gives you extra hearts, but it doesn't actually make them full hearts. They're empty. So this will heal it up to be full health with the new extra hearts. And then we're also going to be given the Dragon's Hand uh, a Totem of Undying. Similar to my last boss fight, once the Totem of Undying bursts, we're going to detect that with commands and start the second phase. And then finally, this is uh, the rest of it, as well as the kind of the cutscene is what the majority of this is. So what we're going to be doing is adding the tag Ender for anything that has the tag spawn. This is how we're going to time out the cutscene. So we're going to have the Dragon's Hand be teleported in place. We're just going to kind of keep it in place so it can't move around during the cutscene. So basically, you can see tag equals not spawn. Once the cutscene's over, it's going to get the tag spawn, which is my this will no longer take place. Then we're going to start with camera commands. It's kind of confusing if you guys have never used camera commands. Uh, just copy what you see here, don't worry too much about it. All we're doing here is setting it so that any player who's within 40 blocks is going to have their camera right in front of the face of the Enderman. That way you get to actually see the scream and it's kind of more intense. Then we're doing a camera fade. So what we're doing is basically the camera, the player of the camera is going to fade into black really quick and then fade out. It's going to see the screen. So this is going to happen when the ender score is one. So right when the cutscene starts, we're going to have the camera of the player basically go black for half a second and then come out of it. And then we're doing the same thing at the other end. So the cutscene ends when ender equals 40. So at ender equals 39, we're going to do another fade. That way it's going to kind of black and then go back to the player's normal perspective. Finally, we're going to do camera clear. So basically, once it hits 40, we're going to revert all the player's cameras back to normal. That way it's not messed up and the player can get right into the boss fight. Then, once the Enderman is at Ender equals 40, we're going to give it the tag spawn. Then we're just going to do a couple of other things. This chain command is slightly out of order, but it doesn't matter that much for the way we have things set up. What we're doing here then is for once the cutscene starts, we're just going to give a camera shake effect to the player to make it a little bit more dramatic. Then we're also going to play a sound, so that way it sounds like the Enderman is screaming uh, at the start of the fight. Then we're going to do a tell raw so that as soon as the cutscene starts, we're going to have a little thing in chat that says the Wrath of the Dragon is here. This is optional. If you guys want to add this to your own or not, you're also more than welcome to change the text as you see it here. But this is just an optional thing that you can do that makes things a little bit more dramatic for your cutscene. Then after that, basically this is going to make it so that the player is just going to face the boss at the end of the cutscene. That way, as soon as it transitions out of the cutscene, the player is ready to fight the boss. It just makes it a little bit easier and a little bit smoother of a gameplay experience. Right. The next set of commands we have is for the first attack of the Enderman. 
So basically, we're going to give the tag Might A, which stands for Might Attack or Endermite Attack, to anything that has the tag spawn. So basically, that's the Enderman after it finished the cutscene. This is only going to happen, though, on a 400 tick delay. So that's going to be happening every 20 seconds or so. Basically, what we're going to do is, at anything with this tag, we're going to summon an Endermite, we're going to name him Missile. Then, we're going to damage the, the Enderman with this tag from the nearest player. So the reason we do this is that it will basically summon an Endermite and then it will teleport. Then we have the next command which is on a 15 tick delay. It's the same thing. It's going to summon an Endermite and it's going to teleport away using the damage commands. We're basically tricking the enemy into th thinking it's getting attacked so that way it teleports. Now this is on a 0 tick delay. We have another summon command exactly the same on a 15 tick delay. Another damage command on a 0 tick delay. We have one more summon commands, once again on a 15 tick delay. And then once again on a 0 tick delay, the damage commands. Then finally, we're going to be removing the tag from the Endermite. This finishes the attack off. Basically what we're doing is, once this attack starts, the Enderman is basically going to spawn an Endermite and then teleport out of the way. Spawn an Endermite, teleport out of the way. Spawn an Endermite, teleport out of the way. It's a little sequence. So we're going to add the score Ender to anything named Missile. So that way we have a timer on the little Endermites that we have. Then at the very beginning of the life cycle of this Endermite, we're just going to teleport itself still facing the nearest person. Then, once it gets past the very first seconds of its existence, it's going to immediately start killing. And by that, we just mean it's simply going to be teleporting half a block forward at a time. And ignore the volcano in the background. Anyways, once the Ender score is over 120, we're just going to kill it because we want to get rid of it. That's so simple as that, really. Um, Next up, we're going to be doing, this is so when the Endermite gets near a player, it basically explodes. So if there is a player within two blocks of the Missile Endermite, we're just going to play the Camera Shoot Explosion. Next up, we're going to be playing an Explosion Sound with the exact same thing. So if the Missile is near a player within two blocks, go ahead and make an Explosion Noise. Then we're going to be doing the actual damage, so basically, if the missile is within two blocks of a player, go ahead and damage that player, and we're going to make the source the actual Enderman boss himself. Additionally, as with any damage command, if you guys want to make the Endermites do more damage, go ahead and change this number, make it higher. If you want them to do less, make it lower. Finally, we're going to simply kill the missile after it's done the explosion. This is just going to kill it, so that way it's basically like it exploded itself. And that's all that we have for the second attack. So the next attack is going to be very similar. What we're doing is on a 760 tick delay, which makes it about every 40, a little less than 40 seconds, I believe. We're going to be summoning an armor stand named Tracker. Right after we summon it, we're going to give it invisibility. That way you guys can't see it. We're putting this on a chain command with zero ticks. Then all we're going to be doing is simply adding a timer to the Tracker armor stand. Then we're going to be making it slowly teleport forward facing the nearest player. We're going to give it a nice little particle effect. This is going to give it more of an aura. And then we're going to give it a second particle effect that gives it kind of the more central location. I can actually summon that in if you guys want to see what I'm talking about. Stand tracker. So it's not invisible, but you can see how there's one kind of central particle and then kind of an aura of particles. That's kind of what we're doing here. As you can see, it's just kind of following me through the air very slowly. So that while this thing is on the ground, you're going to have to do your best to avoid it and keep moving, or else you're going to take a lot of damage very quickly. So now we get to the actual damage commands. So basically, if there's a player within one and a half blocks of the armor stand, we're going to do two damage, and we're going to have the source be the Enderman. Next up, we're going to have this sound, which is the Shulker teleport noise. We're just going to have this constantly. This is just kind of like the slow background noise that tells you, hey, this thing is near. You should probably move out of the way. I'll summon it again. You guys can listen to it. So basically, when you hear that, you probably want to start moving. And then finally, once the score is over 350, so once it's been alive for a pretty long time, we're going to go ahead and kill it just so it's out of the way. 
So this one's going to be a pretty damaging, pretty scary attack. If you don't move, it's going to do a lot of damage to you very quickly. And keep in mind, the Enderman can still be hitting you with Endermites or just attacking you with its fists, all while this thing is tracking you down, which makes for a really chaotic boss fight, especially when we tie it in with the third attack. But the third attack is something that's only going to happen once the Enderman hits its second phase. So first, we need to be able to detect the second phase. So what we're going to be doing here is we're executing for anything that has the tag spawn. So that means the Enderman that has gone through the cutscene, but does not have the tag blind. The tag blind is going to represent the second phase. We're checking, does it have a totem with a quantity of zero? In other words, does it not have a totem of undying? If so, go ahead and throw this particle on the screen. We're going to be doing the exact same checkers, except we're going to be saying, you know, if it doesn't have a totem and it has these tags, go ahead and make an Enderman scream. Then we're going to be healing. So once again, same checkers, does it have the tags, not have the tags, and does it have no totem. We're going to give it health boost and we're going to give it instant health. This is going to be getting the Enderman back up to the same health that we had at the beginning of the first phase. Finally, we're going to be giving it the tag blind. This means, hey, we went through the transformation into the second phase. We no longer need to do these commands again. Finally, this is going to enter the second phase. Now that we're in it, we're going to add a third attack that can happen at the same time as these other two attacks that already exist. And simply on a 450 tick delay, we're going to give the players within 40 block radius darkness for 17 seconds. This is going to make it really scary because you can barely see it all and the Enderman's throwing Endermites at you, it's throwing these trackers at you, and it's teleporting around you all at the same time. Finally, we're also going to be giving it speed so that the whole time you're blind, this Enderman's going to be coming at you really, really fast. And it's going to make it just a terrifying, terrifying opponent to fight. Uh, if you want to make it extra challenging, you could also copy this command and give it strength as well and just make for a really terrifying final attack for your boss fight. But that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed, found this informative. Um, I really do enjoy making these boss fight videos. They're quite challenging, but they're a really fun thing to do. And I have been doing the last two on live stream. I'll probably make future ones on a live stream as well. So yeah, keep an eye out for those live streams. If you guys like these types of tutorials, these boss fights, they're a little more complicated and they do take a lot more time to work. So let me know in the comments if you guys do want to see more of these, because uh, they are a lot of work, but they're really fun to make. So I hope you guys want to see more of these. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But as always, you're going to get a better response if you just ask your questions on our Discord, which will have a link in the description. Other than that, enjoy the full, full scene of me fighting this boss. Bye. I think I see it. Yes, it is. It's the shrine. Oh, I'm ready for this fight. Come here. 